Hi and welcome to Costropolis Brick Build. I'm Ben and today I'm showing you a module called 30. I built this module in 2019 and it outputs balls in batches of 30, hence the name. All GBC modules follow a common standard so that we are able to connect different modules from different people at shows. One part of the standard defines that each module must be able to handle one ball per second on average. So balls could either be given to the input bin of the next module with a constant flow of one ball per second, or this could be done in batches. The standard also defines that the maximum batch size is 30 balls. So in the extreme case you could have batches of 30 balls every 30 seconds. Now in reality you don't find modules that output balls in batches too often, especially not in larger batches or batches of exactly 30. When I started GBC building I realized that some modules also popular ones with available instructions, are not really able to handle batches of 30. Therefore this part of the GBC standard doesn't always receive as much attention as the other parts. To avoid such problems with my modules and to achieve maximum interoperability, I decided to design a module specifically for testing the acceptance of batches of 30 balls. The result of this you see in this video and it proved to be an interesting module in itself also. It has gone through a number of shows by now and it seemed pretty popular. To show you 30 in an actual loop in this video I took a few of my modules to do a minimal layout. Separate videos on the modules you see in this layout and also on the ones you don't see will be available on this channel at a later date. Collecting exactly 30 balls and releasing them in one batch must work if balls arrive at one ball per second, but also if they arrive slower. One technique to collect an exact number of balls are tippers. When applying tippers in GBC, two main problems usually need to be addressed. First, the weight of one ball needs to be sufficient to trigger tipping. With 30 balls altogether, the weight of one Lego ball may not be sufficient. Keep in mind that Lego balls are by far not as heavy as marbles or balls used in some other marble run systems. Another challenge is that emptying a tipper needs to be done before the next ball arrives on that tipper and due to the ball rate of one ball per second, emptying of the tipper would theoretically have to be done in one second, which is not much time to dump 30 balls. Both of these problems were tackled in 30 by using a second tipper. This additional tipper first collects batches of three balls and then dumps these batches of three onto the main tipper. As a result, the tipping point of the main tipper only needs to be precise to the weight of three balls and not of one. Also, the main tipper will only receive balls every three seconds at most. Therefore, it has more time to dump its batch of 30 balls. Although the tippers of 30 work very reliably, there is still a minor issue with the exit ramp of the conveyor. In rare cases, two balls exiting subsequently need a slightly different amount of time to exit the ramp. This results in their distance being slightly lower than one second, leaving the tipper not enough time to get back to its initial position. Occasionally, this may lead to a 31st ball being included in one batch, as you can see here. For now this really happens only rarely and I'm happy with how the module works right now. Still improving the exiting of the conveyor further remains to be a future task. 
Another design principle applied to both tippers is that the counterweight has a lower distance to the center of the tipper than the last balls going onto a tipper have. That way the weight of the balls has a higher relative effect, making it easier to calibrate the tipper. Another advantage of this design is that the main tipper can have three separate lanes to store the 30 balls, so it doesn't need to be as long as it would have to be if it would carry all 30 balls in one lane. In order to distribute the balls among the three lanes correctly, the small tipper uses a pin stud connector to keep the balls centered and cheese slopes to guide them correctly into the lanes. Also, the small tipper is tilted slightly to the front to ensure balls always roll into the correct place. I build all my modules in white with an accent color that is different for every module. Back in the day I went with sand green for 30, because a number of fitting elements were available on the Packer brick vaults in 2019. This of course includes the telescopes, which are the basis for the conveyor, but also the 1x2 tiles and the 2x2 curved slopes. The initial version of the module had light bluish grey pillars in the back. Because I couldn't find any really useful elements for making pillars in sand green in 2019. Recently though, some fitting sand green pillars have been introduced in the Luigi starter pack and I decided to refactor the module to use these. In the initial version of the module, the balls were pushed up onto the exit by the conveyor as opposed to the current version where balls are dropped onto the exit from above. I personally find the pushing version a lot more visually interesting. Still I had to refactor the module to its current form because the pusher version stopped working after half a year after I built the module. For some reason the friction in pushing the balls up increased causing the conveyor to jam occasionally. I'm not really sure why that changed over time, but it's another interesting example that shows that you can never test a GBC module long enough. After having to extend the conveyor upwards to drop balls onto the exit, I was also able to make the exit ramp shorter. I decided to leave the overall depth of the module unchanged, but instead moved the conveyor backwards by two studs. I did that because I did not want the telescopes to reach into the 8x8 input area of the module. Although you see a lot of modules having moving elements within the input area, a strict interpretation of the GBC standard in my opinion would forbid that. Therefore I took the opportunity of the shorter output ramp to keep the telescopes out of the actual input area. Overall 30 became a popular module at the few shows that took place in the last two and a half years and it proved to be very helpful in developing and testing other modules. In many cases I redesigned the input bins or even mechanism of other modules where making input bins bigger or longer has been a common design change. So if you are a GBC builder yourself I hope I was able to raise some awareness for the 30 batch part of the GBC standard. And if you don't build GBC modules yourself, I hope you enjoyed watching 30 in this video and see you next time.